Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 86 of the Own the Moment podcast. My name is TJ Lasig. I'm one of the co-founders here at OTM, and you're getting my podcast recording voice today because we are not live. We're recording a special edition podcast here. We have our good friend Noah from I Got It joining us, talking through everything that they have going on over there. For those of you that do not know, I Got It is the official memorabilia partner of the Owners Club. People that have been in TOC know some of the awesome giveaways they've been giving us over the past couple of weeks. We've had signed jerseys from Alvin Kamara, Drew Brees, Tony Gonzalez. There's a Saquon signed football and uh, lots of good stuff from I Got It, Justin. What do you say? I love it. I love it. I love that Michael Thomas signed jersey as well. You know, maybe I could have the wife to allow me to put something finally on the white wall behind me. I don't know. That would actually be perfect. A jersey hanging there would be good, but at least you have the underdog belt next to you. <laughs> maybe a well, TOC, <laughs> maybe a TOC jersey or something. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Appreciate the incredible intro. It's always great to uh, to chat with you guys. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, exciting things going on. Yeah, happy to be having you on the show here. So, quick rundown: we're going to be talking through the NFT charter memberships that Noah and team have going on. A little bit about the I Got It fan cave, some of the recent MLB drops that you guys did, and then I know a, a lot of exciting stuff that's coming up in the near future that. That we're going to dive into yeah so uh we're uh, exciting so we have already closed down the the initial offerings um of our soft launch um we strategically only want to release you know our, our baseball guys um just to kind of gauge the market see if there's anything we need to approve upon or do anything like that test out the technologies um everything's been going well so far obviously with um the MLB lockout. There's some other factors that we got that we got to tie into in terms of when that that uh, legitimate launch will be. Um, but we're really excited towards that. We've already released the first charter um, charter event NFT for uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr., which was last week, um, and that one was a personal fun one for me because I was able to help actually uh, film the content, edit it, and get it produced um, as well. I got to meet Vladimir Guerrero Jr., which was so sick. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Taking then, a step back for a second, could you just for for people that maybe aren't familiar, give the quick one hundred and one on what the charter membership NFTs are? Yeah. yeah so uh, our charter NFT program is a way for you know diehard sports fans, NFT enthusiasts, and you know collectors of all types to really test their their sports knowledge with young and emerging athletes. Um, if you if you buy a charter membership NFT for one of our athletes. Um, you know, as that player has successes both on and off the field or court, um, you'll be able to receive a follow on NFT um, that you'll be able to keep, you'll be able to resell. Um, and so you will be able to get that follow on NFT for $1. So for all of our athletes for the rest of time, um, you'll be able to receive any of their NFTs for that $1 with the same serial number as your charter event or charter membership NFT. So it's been we're, we're still very, very ground floor early stages, but between Mikey Williams, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Fernando Tatis, um, Ronald Acuna, um, and we'll be launching Wander, Fra Wander Franco um, soon after. And we have a, a nice pipeline of, of you know, high-end talent across multiple sports. So we're really excited of what it can become. Uh, the initial feedback has been everyone's loving it. Um, so we're, we're excited. Yeah, no, I think it's pretty cool because if you think, I mean, through you've got Vlad and Tatis, I believe, are 22. I think Acuna's 23. Uh, Franco may 20. not even be legally able to drink right now. But he's, he's making a little bit more than I am. <laughs> Is he, how old? Let's see. Yeah, he's still 20 years old. Uh, I, you know, Juan Franco, pretty much the future of the Rays there. I, I do like the concept of, hey, identifying some of the best bat baseball players in the game at a very young age. I mean, you had what both Vlad and Tatis were runner up for the MVP. Um, you've got, I don't know, I think it's really interesting as well, because when people see an NFT project, there is a lot around the hype aspect around the, okay, we want this to be the biggest thing ever. Um, and I don't know, like it makes sense the way you guys are doing it with the kind of soft launch with regards to not going crazy on the marketing aspects. Uh, and I think like, hey, if this was a year ago, you know, it's not too dissimilar to what Top Shot started off with, with a bit of a closed beta, not marketing, not advertising, getting things right, working with for them, it was with the leagues and the players. For you guys, it's finding the right talent, building the right relationships, and then starting to mint those NFTs. Because I think 
like a it allows you as a company to kind of get things right but it also allows people like me or you know people who are listening kind of early in on this have the ability to get what like if you got one of the first vlad nfts there were less than a hundred in total when you go across like the three yep. um so i mean like those end up being more valuable and it's it's always funny because people talk about like oh if i was in those early days of top shot I would have bought so many of them. I would have bought them all. The you know Vince Carter was going for three dollars, and there's the stories of people there that are like, ah, eh, well, I'll buy it at three, but not four, or so forth. And now it's, I mean, but those people had conviction, yeah. and then it paid off eventually. And so I think there's a similar level of when you're in the moment right now, where there's just not that much, you know, you're not marketing it, you're not getting that, you know, trying to push for that much publicity and such, like there's not that much of a huge market for it. But if you're bullish on this as a kind of, hey, long term bullish and I got it bullish on those players, uh, bullish on that those players are really invested in this, not only financially, but also like interested, interested in it and like wanting to use this as a core part of their uh, community engagement. I think that's something that a lot of people still really want to see. Um, then I think there's a, it, it's a really cool program to be involved in so early. Well, and I think you, I think you're spot on in that, like, you know, obviously with guys of that caliber and those names, you know, there's a lot of, you know, associated press. And when, when they post something on social media, like it goes, you know, a lot bigger than if I were to, um, but you know, and we knew that going in where if we did, you know, full guerrilla marketing with all of those guys and really, you know, put the full PR release out there. Um, it would be a lot different than it would be now where it's more kind of that organic where we've really been able to, even in our, our smaller community on, on discord and then, you know, feedback we get on Twitter and then from a bunch of our, you know, our charter club members, um, we actually get like legitimate feedback in terms of like, you know, I love this, but you know, I think these are a couple of things you can work on and you could implement in order to make it better. Um, one of being, um, port portability. So initially, uh, our you know with our conversations with the players, they wanted um, on a on a private blockchain. But from you know from being released now with the soft launch for you know a little over a month, um, you know the feedback that we really got from the community on how we could best build upon the success we've had so far and really continue to grow and to get to get access into those new kind of emerging markets, you know, on top of what we'll be what we will be able to do with the baseball guys. Um, is you know something that we've really you know been appreciative of that you know our community has been willing to to give us that feedback, um, and so what we're working on is within the month we'll have full portability, um, and we're working with um, a couple of higher end marketplaces that you guys would be familiar with. Can't disclose um, that we'll be able to port onto their platforms, which would allow for you know like we were saying for more people to be able to experience and to learn about um, the charter program as a whole. So at a high level, when you say portability, we're talking taking them from the kind of the close the, you know, I guess you guys are using what is it the crypto ledger, the I got a crypto ledger, yep. and your plans are to allow people to actually have these NFTs, port them over to their MetaMask to their current, you know, wallet on Ethereum. Correct. Yeah. And that's and that's something, you know, initially, we had thought that people would wanted to kind of keep it on that one platform. But I think as we continue to learn and like both personally as a collector and then as a company and you know learning from our clients um we realized that was something that's very important and will help in the long run grow i got its name but as well as the charter program um inherently like i said get more eyes on it and help grow that community but you know i'm honestly kind of curious your guys thoughts you know obviously um fl flow has kind of been kind of that main spot for a lot of these sports nft projects you know, between there, OpenSea, you know, all, all of that. I'm kind of curious what your guys' take on that would be. Yeah, I, I'll start. I think it has to do with ecosystems and it has to do with where the kind of market is being built around. Uh, I think if you look at Top Shot, the reason why it has been successful and there hasn't been a need for them to be able to be ported over to Ethereum or something like that is because they've built of enough of an ecosystem that people know when I want to buy Top Shot, I'm going to flow. I think similarly with what we have with the owners club where people know that like, Hey, when they want to take these NFTs and use them for games, well, they go to our marketplace because that's where the community is. That's where the ecosystem is built around. Yep. I think it's possible that like in a future state, people are like, okay, for the charter membership programs, I go to, I got it. But I think there's a large tipping point that needs to happen. That's not ha happening yet. And so when that's the case and same thing with majority of these other projects, like, I mean, 
even you know you think of the best profile picture projects or some of these larger projects that are built on ethereum like it still makes sense that they are available on OpenSea and some of these kind of secondary marketplaces because that's the best chance they have to make you know become more aware be added to some of these third-party analytics providers uh and it just hey it's nice to have all of your nfts in one spot um so i think that's where like for the crypto native for the nfts it makes sense I would then also turn it around back to you and be like, what is the plan to really, you know, onboard that next generation of non NFT customers? Because I know you guys had thousands of people in the uh, fan that, that I got at fan cave for the AMAs with Akuna with Tatis and stuff. Um, but I would guess a very small percent of those people have any idea what an NFT is. Exactly. And so I'll let TJ go first, but I am really curious, like what is I got its plan to really bring those people into this ecosystem? Because those are the most high value customers, both from a primary and secondary marketplace, since those are the ones who are true fans of those players. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with everything that you said regarding the marketplace options. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the future as we see, I don't know, people like Coinbase getting into the space with their marketplace and Binance. I know that you know, it, it's not just going to be a one marketplace rules all. I think over time, we'll see more and more different marketplaces pop up. And like Justin said, it, it would make sense for certain communities to kind of rally around certain marketplaces. We've seen it with Flow. We've seen it with the profile picture projects on yep. Ethereum. And uh, yeah, I guess what, what what are your thoughts on how you see it going, Noah, both for I got it and just the larger industry in general? Yeah, well, I think, to, to, Justin, to answer your kind of initial question of how we're going to exp exp expand into the non-NFT demographics, um, I think, especially in baseball, there's this this yearn for, you know, authenticity of the athlete themselves. And, like, you know, I, I personally have gotten burned on a couple of these NFT projects, but, you know, as we've spoken at length, a lot of it was these players just pushed it out. You know, they weren't bought in at all. Um, you know, obviously we have the, uh, the, the maximum make guarantee and that all these athletes are the largest shareholders of their NFT collections, but from the perspective of being able to gain this, you know, unforeseen access to the athlete, like it's not just what they're doing on the field. It's also off the field. And, you know, the whole, the potential of this charter program is like, it, it is, it is really the athletes. So they'll be able to put their creative spin on it you'll be able to hear from and like see things that the athlete is doing that you necessarily wouldn't see on social media. It's not, you know, the buttoned up buster only interview on ESPN. Like you're getting behind the scenes, like the, the Vladimir Guerrero one, like I was standing there, you know, with our film crew, like with Vladimir's closest friends and family. And they were talking in Spanish. I had no idea what they were talking about, but um, you know, it was, you really felt like you were a part of that crew and like hanging out with them. And that's really something that I think there is a major need for in sports as a whole. Like, I mean, you see what, you know, LeBron James is able to do with like the barbershop where you really feel like you're a part of the conversation. You really are able to see inside these, these, you know, celebrities heads. Um, and there's so much more to an athlete than just what they do on the field, especially in baseball where, you know, I, they have a, a tough job, a tough time marketing their athletes off the field. Um, but I think that's something that we'll be able to unlock and where like, you know, a lot of these players who come from, you know, different demographics will be able to expand into those communities where, you know, you have a guy um, like Vladimir Guerrero, who's from the DR, um, you know, we'll be able to, to, through him, help educate his core fan base about what NFTs are in the, the behind the scenes of him, because they'll be able to relate to him in a different way than say, you know, like I, I would as an NFT collector, one of his charter holders. So I think, you know, just the entirety of the program, you'll be able to see all different sides of the athletes that will hopefully expand into different niche demographics that um, they'll be able to uh, connect with and, you know, make the, the whole charter experience whole. And I think to TJ's, you know, question about, you know, what would we be doing in terms of the marketplace? Like, I think that is a tool that will help bring NFTs and the crypto community and, and Web3 to all these other demographics that may not necessarily be into it yet, right? Like there's, you know, the kids playing baseball in, in the DR or, you know, Ronald Acuna's fans in Venezuela. Um, I think there are new demographics that can be exposed to NFTs through the chart that can and will be exposed 
through the charter program. And so wherever that, um, you know, the uh, marketplaces or primary issuance issuances, like I think is a, is a tool for the, the bigger picture of helping grow, um, you know, this early, this early NFT stage that we're in. Love it. Love it. Cool. Cool. All right. And then what, uh, what do you see coming next year? I know that you guys have, you know, some, uh, continued exciting partnerships. Is there any little secret sauce that you can give us of what you guys have coming up? So the, so we released the Vlad Guerrero Hank Aaron, uh, 2021 Hank Aaron award last week. Um, we'll be releasing the Ronald Acuna championship or world series NFT, um, this week. Um, and so, you know, we have our baseball guys in soft launch starting next year is where you'll see, um, which is, oh my gosh, now like two weeks away, but you'll start to see us release more of our other athlete, uh, other sports. Um, so you'll see us if NFL, um, you know, NBA, more MLB guys, um, we're having conversations with WWE, MMA. Um, we've had conversations with cricket. So that's something I know nothing about, but, um, we're, we're excited about, you know, it's not just what the charter program kind of is in you know day one it's not only like what the athletes are but as well when you're able to add in more and more different types of fans i think it's going to help the whole program as a whole um expand and you know you'll see us continue to lead with some of the the preeminent athletes in their respective sports you know like we did we did with baseball so i would expect um some other big names just you know what what i can share for the nfl we'll have tyree kill aaron donald um, college football, Quinn Ewers, uh, Christian Harris, a couple, couple of names like that. Um, NBA right now, the, one, the only one we can announce is De'Aaron Fox, but we're working on a couple other big names that I know. The, uh, the top shot in the basketball community will, will really enjoy. So a lot, of, a lot of cool things coming, and obviously we'll make sure that uh, your, your audience is the first to hear about it. Very cool. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I know, um, so just you know, at a high level, there are, for the NFT charter membership programs, there are like different tiers. There's I think one, the cheapest one was down to $50. Then there was middle 250 and one a little above that. Um, and then every follow on NFT. So the one that you're talking about, the Vlad one, where you did the interview, each person can buy that for $1. What has the secondary marketplace been like? I don't know. What, what, what have you guys seen? So it's interesting. It's, it's, we're, it's a little bit smaller just because we have a little bit of, we have smaller users, but we've seen the activity for, you know, the, the secondary that there is, is people are making money, which at the end of the day is an important thing for, you know, our project. I know that the, the follow on platinum NFTs have been selling anywhere from 50 to $70, the $1 NFTs. Um, and we've had a couple of people who have sold their, their, their black charter NFTs for upwards of $300. So if you were one of those who got in on the black um, tier, you would have, made $300 on that $1 NFT. So that's obviously exciting. Um, but we are seeing that there is the secondary marketplace once we release those follow on NFTs, because, you know, we can go on and talk about what these follow on NFTs really are, but until people actually see them and see what they can be, um, you know, they're not really going to know. And right after the Mikey first release and the, the Guerrero first release is when we saw, a, you know, an uptick in activity and, and more conversation and interest. Um, and I'll give a, a shout out to our core users who are have been, you know, participating in our, in our, um, in our discord and then as well promoting us on Twitter and on Facebook, Instagram. So, you know, we're, we're really grateful for all that the, you know, the community's done so far, but I think, you know, people are starting to get excited about what they're seeing on the secondary marketplace in terms of, of, um, sales. Yeah, Obviously nice. there's always room to grow, but we're, we're <laughs> excited about the, the early returns. Yeah. I like that. I like the long-term view that you guys have personally. I feel like too, too much of the, the NFT world is quick, quick wins and quick gains yeah. and, you know, figured out later, but it seems like you guys really have a, a long-term plan that you've been working towards and can see it with all of these awesome athletes and teams and such that you've been able to work with. Yeah. And I mean, if you play it right, if you get one of your, you know, if you get a platinum for 250 when it, you know, initially releases, then if you're making even 30, $40 for each, um, follow an NFT, like you'll be making your money back over, you know, that period of time. And with it being $1, like, you know, our whole goal is that we want people to be able to financially benefit from it. Um, so we, we, we hope that it, it, it is a long-term play. 
Um, and we have seen people starting to stockpile them, if you will, whether, you know, similar to like a cryptocurrency or a stock even. It kind of is like, it's like dividends where yeah, you can exactly. still maintain the primary asset, which is the charter membership. But each time you buy for a dollar, get that NFT. And then depending on the tier, the level, the demand, it sounds like you're able to make a decent, uh, what, let's say if you bought the, the one for 250 and now you're selling for $40, each time they come on, you're looking at what about you know, six NFTs. Maybe that's a yeah. year's worth to get your money back, and you still hold your investment. So now you're you know double your profit. Exactly. Pretty cool. Anything else for the people, Noah, that I would like to share here before I, I know we've got a little little fun that we're going to end with. Uh, well, the last thing is um, gifting is finally available. Um, that was part of what we were working on, and it, it ties into the portability. So I had to do one in order to get the other. So gifting is finally available. Um, we'll be promoting that on our platforms as well. Um, and that's, you know, the next short step is is full portability. So we're excited about the the progress the tech team has made so far. Nice, because I know you guys did a decent amount of giveaways early yep. on. Um, so uh, we, we are excited to give people, those out. The to people the will be ready. Yes. <laughs> we'll, uh, I have a feeling they'll be, we'll, we'll be reaching out to all of you um, that, that we kind of have these giveaways for. And then you guys are the kings of gig giveaways. I mean, we mentioned all those signed jerseys. We mentioned the sign of kind of football, signed mini helmets and stuff that have been going on with the owners club. Um, is there anything we can do maybe just for just for the people who listen to the show, the ones who made it to the end? Can we do a private promo code, something? What do you got in the warehouse? Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, no, definitely. I'll take a look. We got stuff everywhere. I got all these basketballs behind me. I know we got some more stuff in the other room um how about this i'll take a look i'll let you guys know what what we can give away um and we'll we'll make sure that we relay um that to, to all of uh all of the audience members okay so this is our twist like, my 80, arm if you will <laughs> <laughs> i think this is our 86th podcast so let's do something unique we'll go promo code is otm86 we will put the link to it in the uh show notes and then uh we'll also Maybe, maybe we'll we'll secretly post the link in a couple of places like the I Got It Fan Cave channel or something. We'll see. But definitely check the show notes. We'll put it there. Um, and then, yeah, we'll find out what it is. But probably some kind of sign memorabilia. I like it. Well, we got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Very Perfect. cool. Perfect. Well, no, thank Perfect. you for coming on. This has been great. Um, I'm extremely interested. You know, I loved, loved what you guys have been doing early on. And uh, I think it's one of those things where there's obviously – some people, you know, in this space, we've seen like the level of impatience. We've seen the level of just like, hey, gimme, gimme, gimme. Uh, but it really shows that like you guys really are in this for the long run. And uh, that's why kind of we love being partners with you all and why I personally enjoy like watching what you guys are doing from an innovative sense and playing that long game. Well, Justin, I appreciate it as always. <laughs> you're, you guys are always a, a fantastic help. TJ, appreciate again the fantastic introduction and for, uh, for having me on. Yeah, it's Coop, been great shout working. out to you in the back. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Always got a shout out, Coop. Yeah, it's been great working with you and the team and looking forward to everything that you have coming up. So, all right. Thanks, everyone, right, for the listen. Care. Remember, check it out. Promo code OTM86. On behalf of Justin, Noah, and producer Coop, I'm TJ Lasig. We'll talk to you guys next time.